By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing a patron match against patron Falk. Falk is from Mallorca, Spain, and he's bringing a red-green aggro deck to the table. It's got berserks, it's got curd apes, it is fierce. And I'm challenging him with my troll disco deck. Now, before I jump into the deck decks, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to go to the games first, maybe check the deck decks later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find a timestamp that reads MTG Games. Click on there. It'll take you straight to the games. Um, and in that same description below, you can also find a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And um, that is a page that informs you on how you can become a sponsor of the show. So please consider becoming a patron, just like Falk, because you know the reason I still have this channel, I'm still able to do this as a content creator, is because of the support I get from all you patrons. So if you're not a patron yet, please consider becoming one. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks for all the info. It already starts for $1 a month. Okay, and now that you're fully informed, I'm gonna start with the deck decks. I'm gonna start with the deck of Falk. Let's have a look at his red green brew. And here we see the deck of Falk. So this is really your red green aggro deck, right? So red green is so strong because of course, green gives you access to ramp, to cheap creatures. Uh, and of course to Berserk and Giant Grove and Red gives you access to Curd Ape, which is of course fantastic in combination with Green and more importantly to Burn, right? So Lightning Bolts, Chain Lightnings, Fire Bolts, it's all in this deck. Now, when I'm looking a little bit closer at this deck, what I notice is that he's actually not playing with cards like Argovian Pixies, Elvish Archers. Instead, he's going a little bit for the bigger creature package, right? He's playing with two often trolls, which are kind of tucked away, but I can still see them. Two giant spiders, which I love. I'm a big fan of giant spiders. And um, of course, four urnums. Now, the urnums you see more often. The curd apes you also see more often. But a lot of times, players choose to play a little bit more aggressively. Maybe play some more one drops, um, one 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 drops to combine with Pendlehaven, for example. Uh, you know, you can think of script sprites. You can think of. Um, the scavenger folk which are here in the sideboard by the way so he can still board them in so you really go on the tempo advantage he's still doing that but he's choosing to go with some creatures that have you know a little more power a little more more contents you could say with the giant spider and the often trolls now uh, when we're looking at the rest of the deck we see he's playing with four berserks that's quite a lot a lot of people choose to play with two or three berserks he's going with the full four so it's like mega aggro i think as soon as he's got four mana and he can jam one of his urnums down, there's a big chance of just gonna lose the game on the spot, right? Because if you can put a giant growth on an urnum, it's got seven power, then put a berserk, that's 14 power of damage. Combine that with like the the, the burn and like the one drops to curd apes, Lana or elves. This is a very, very explosive uh, deck. Obviously, he's also included the Ice Storms. Ice Storm is always really good in these decks because you can have a turn one Lanawar Elf and a turn two Ice Storm. That means you're ramping up with your Mana Dork and your opponent is basically ramping down, right? Because you're taking care of one of the lands. Now, we also see some special lands here uh, at the bottom of the row. And what Falk told me is he's now in Mallorca, Spain, but he traveled the world, you know, and these three lands here are all depicting places where he has actually lived. And there's also a four, yeah, two fours. So there are in total, I think, five of these special lands that are depict, depicting places where he lived, which I really, really like. I love that flavor and, you know, that personal, personality that he's put into his deck, you know, by adding these lands. I think that's beautiful, uh, Falk. So thank you for sharing that story with me. Uh, but now I guess it's time to have a look at, uh, at my deck. Maybe you've seen it before here on the channel. Let's take a look at my Troll Disco Brew. And here you see the Troll Disco deck. It's a pretty well-known archetype in old school. What it does is you're playing with four Nefneral's discs. You destroy everything with your discs, but because you are playing with trolls, you can regenerate them because Setch Troll and Often Troll have a regeneration. So you regenerate your creatures and your opponent is losing all the creatures. That is basically at the heart of every Troll Disco deck. And that's exactly what's happening here as well. Now, then you go and try to find, uh, you know, add creatures that go well 
with the Nev's disk. And then obviously you have Mishra's Factory, which are brilliant with Nevnerals disk, but you also have Rook Egg, which is just really fun with the disk. Rook Egg, an O3 creature from uh, Arabian Nights. And when it gets uh, destroyed, when it goes to the graveyard, you get a 4-4 Bird token at the beginning of the next end step. So you get a nice 4-4 Flyer in return, right? So you put your Rook X on the table and then you crack them with your disc and you get nice 4-4 Flyers in return. And again, your opponent, of course, has just lost all their creatures and actually everything except for the lands because of the Nav's disc, right? So that's really the combination that you wanna, wanna do with this. Now, there are some you know, neat little tricks in here. For example, I'm playing with an Earthquake. So Earthquake and Rook Egg, again, it's a really nice synergy, right? If I've got multiple eggs and I can get multiple 4-4 flyers and at the same time probably kill some creatures with my opponent, deal some damage to my opponent and get some creatures, 4-4 flyers back. So it's just really good bang for your buck. So that's some synergy there with the Earthquake. I'm also playing with one Sacrifice and one Howl from Beyond. I just think that's really funny. So there could be a scenario where I, for example, you know, attack with a creature, then play my Sacrifice on the Rook X, second the X, so I get four mana. I can use those mana to pump into a potential Howl from Beyond, deal three extra points of damage, and also, again, get a 4-4 four, four Flyer at the beginning of the next end step because I sacked my Rook X. So that's, there. you know, there are some little tricks in here, and I just really enjoy playing with one elves. I also like this one, Anime Dead. I think Anime Dead, it, 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 it works together really well with the, the, uh, the disc, and it doesn't work together well with the disc. The reason it doesn't work together well with the disc is because, of course, the disc destroys the Anime Dead, the reason is it works very well with the disc is because, hey, you're playing with discs, so you're going to kill a lot of creatures of your opponent. They will be in the graveyard, so there's probably a really nice, juicy target to get uh, back with your anime debt. So, you know, that's kind of that that thing. Um, I, I also chose to put two Will-O-The-Wisps in this deck, kind of because of nostalgia, because it's a creature everybody used to play, and now you see it less and less because of, uh, of the mazes of If, I guess. You know, they're just uh, a better option usually than your, your Willow. But I really like Willow still. And I think Willow goes together quite well, of course, with the disc. And it's still a really good creature. It basically stops everything. And it's going to buy me some time, you know, to get the disc out and, uh, and to kind of control the board from there. So I think it's a good match. I'm also playing with one Jam Day Tome. The main reason for that is that I kind of, I want to have some kind of card draw. You know, if I'm really stuck, I want to have some kind of way out of, uh, out of it. Maybe with my book, you know, I can draw out of it. And of course, I've got a Wheel of Fortune as well, talking about card draw. That's probably the better card to get me out of a sticky situation. And what I like about playing with Black is that I have access to Demonic Tutor. So all those one-offs become a little bit better because you're playing with, with Demonic Tutor. So I really like that. Um, then when we're looking at the sideboard, uh, there, there, there's one card that I just want to highlight because I think it's a really cool card. The card's Immolation. And Immolation is a card from Legends, gives plus two, minus two, an enchant creature. And it's really nice because it works really well on the Rook Egg, right? Because the Rook Egg is an O3. So then with an Immolation on it, it becomes a 2-1 and you can start attacking with it. And your opponent doesn't want to block it because then they get a 4-4 Flyer. So it's really funny. Um, and it's also really good against like Hypnotic Spectres, for example. So if my opponent is playing with just annoying, you know, two twos and one ones, I will like board my Immolation in and I can use it both ways. I can use it to kill the creatures of my opponent or I can use it to put it on my Rook Egg. Either way, it kind of feels good. So I'm, I'm, I'm testing this out as a sideboard card. I think the rest of the sideboard is pretty, uh, pretty obvious. Anyway, this is my troll disco deck. And now that we've discussed both decks, let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So we've got Falk sitting on the left with his red and green deck. He's on the play, I believe. And I think he's gonna take a mulligan here, going down to six. And I'm sitting on the right. And I'm playing Disco Troll, so red and black. Yep, there goes one of the cards. And we're ready to get going. There is a mountain into a Curd Ape. And let's see what I can do here. Probably going to go a little bit slower than uh, my opponent Falk here. Okay, this is really good for me though, this Soul Ring is really going to help. You know, when we're looking at both of the decks, uh, Falk is really playing the aggro strategy, right? Wants to get out of the gate real quick, plays with Berserks, Giant Grows, Bolts, and a lot of cheaper creatures. And I'm really playing more on the long run with my uh, Trolls that I can regenerate and, of course, my uh, Nevenerals Discs. So um, as long as I can live long enough to deploy the Discs and the Trolls, I feel like I'm kind of safe. Four cards in the hand here and a pass, it seems, for my opponent Falk. So this is good news for me that he's not playing anything else out. He's giving me some time. Playing a mountain, not finding a swamp yet. Okay, there is a 
an uh, off control. Oi, oi, oi. So it's a 2-2. Two, two. And for one red, I can regenerate it. And this is a very special troll because this is the Timmy troll. So I'm showing it here to Falk. <laughs> it's a very, very cool altar. I got it at the often troll cup in Leovarda. And here passing the turn back to Falk. There's a forest. There's the attack, but I can block and regenerate. That's exactly what I'm doing. Does he have a bolt perhaps now to kill it or chain lightning? Nope, just passing the turn. And now, I mean, I've already got five mana. If I can find a land, yeah, there's the bat land. So it's already looking really good for me. One of the things I can do is maybe play a Setch if I have one. Another often troll, also good. I mean, this is really tough for, uh, for Falk here because I can regenerate all my creatures. So it's really hard for him to kill them. I mean, the only good thing for him is that he's playing with so many Berserks and Giant Crows because Berserk gives the creature Trample. I guess we're going to see exactly an Urnum Jin here, which is kind of okay. I mean, it helps him a little bit. It also makes one of my creatures unblockable, of course, because they get Force Walk. There's a uh, Mishra's Factory, but that's going to happen next turn, of course. I think for now, there's makes no sense for me to, uh, to attack here. Exactly, just passing the turn back to Falk. And let's see what he can do. Okay, yeah, now my uh, Timmy Troll gets Forest Walk. That's why there's a counter on there. So during the upkeep, Luca has to give one of my creatures Forest Walk because of the Urnum. There's another Urnum. Now, the cool thing, though, with Urnum Jin is if you have two on the table, it doesn't matter because you can target the same creature. So it's not like you have to give two creatures Forest Walk. Um, a nice thing you can do, by the way, to get rid of the Forest Walk is by playing with a Hammerheim, a card from uh, Legends that can take away land walk abilities. And it also makes a red mana. So it would be quite good in this deck of uh, Falk. Tapping three. There is a Setch Troll, but now of course I can attack here with this forest walking often troll. It's going for a stroll into the forest. Two more damage here. Luca dropping to 15, it seems. Also took a damage, of course, from his own City of Brass earlier in the game when he cast the uh, first Urnum. Passing the turn, but it's looking really, really bad here for, for Falk. I think the regeneration creatures are super annoying for him. But like I said, you know, if he can find enough giant groves and berserks, because berserk gives trample, he can still deal a lot of damage. Combine that with burn. So I'm not in the safe zone yet, but it's looking quite good for me. You can, of course, also double berserk. Then you can go from 8 to 16. There's a pass. Let's see what I can do. Attacking again. I mean, I can only attack with the force walking creature because the rest, I mean, doesn't really make sense. He's got those two big Urnums. And I'm just kind of expending on the board, passing the turn, probably waiting to draw into a Nevenerals disc to kind of close the game. And I think if you're a Falk, you're probably just waiting, uh, you know, to find those Berserks to make like a big Alpha Strike perhaps. And see if you can just kill me in one attack. Looks like he's going to do something. Going to tap three. Okay, there's a Wheel of Fortune. So I'm going to discard here. Let's see, a Sacrifice and some other stuff. Not really clear, but we're just drawing seven new ones. Looks like there's a Shatter there, perhaps. And I think a Shatter, not a very useful card in this matchup. Oh, look at that. There's a Maze. This Maze of it is quite good. Because then he can stop the creature with Forest Walk. There's the untap for me. I do believe I'm playing with some Stone Rains in the deck. Not 100% sure, though. But I do think... Yeah, I think they are in there. So maybe I can find a Stone Rain and take care of the uh, Maze of it. Okay, tapping four. Okay, there's a Rook Egg. So if I can, I mean, I really need an Evernose Disc. I feel like if I have a Disc, this game is mine. If I can find a way to blow up the Rook Egg, then of course I get a 4-4 four, four Flying Bird, which would be quite good. Tapping the Swamp, untapping again. Looks like I'm thinking about doing something. Willow the Wisp. Okay, it doesn't really matter that much. I mean, it's some more defense. My biggest problem, like I said already, is really that, you know, Berserk Trample thing. 
Five cards in hand, passing turn back to Falk. So he's on 13. And I mean, we're really kind of at a standstill at the moment with that uh, with that maze. There's an off control on the side of Falk here. So he's got four creatures, off control, Curd Ape, Urnum, double Urnum. And I've got uh, double off control, Setch Troll, and of course the uh, the Rook Egg and the Will o' the Wisp. And then I also have two Mishra's Factories. And there's the pass, it seems. Am I going to do something on end step? Playing a bolt on my own Rook Egg, of course. Yeah, that makes sense. So I'm going to get the 4 4 flyer. So that means that next turn I can attack with the 4 4 flyer and with the Often Troll with Forest Walk and at least deal some damage to Falk. It's probably just going to be two points of damage, but still, damage is damage. There's another Swamp, four cards in hand. Attacking with the flyer and with the troll with forest walk. So he, of course, only has one mace. Probably going to mace. Ooh, what else is he going to do? Double bolt here on the flyer, though. That is unfortunate. Looks like he is going to take the damage. You know, reminding himself that he still has that mace. Sending it back. Look at this, a Jam Day Tome. For a moment, I thought it was going to be a disc, you know, that's also four in the casting cost. But this Tome is going to help me to perhaps find the disc. I'm quite surprised I haven't uh, found a single disc yet. Another land here for, uh, for Falk. Now remember, he's of course also playing with one Fireball, a Fork, and just a lot of direct damage, right? So one of the lines that he could choose is he just uh, tried to make a huge Fireball. Kind of uh, tried to kill me that way. Problem, of course, for him is I'm still on 18, which is really high. So he's just going to play another troll passing the turn. End step, I'm going to draw a card here. I think this book eventually could give me the victory here. The card advantage, of course, is huge. It's going to help me find what I need. There's another Badlands. What could I do here? Tapping four again. Making some space. Okay, there's another Rook Egg. And passing the turn here. Three cards in hand. 13 life here for Falk. 18 life for me. And Falk here really being a little bit, you know... In the tank, trying to find a way through. I don't think there really is, though. Again, a bolt on my own Rook Egg. I did that before, so that means I'm going to get that 4-4 flyer. Just going to try to, you know, deal some damage here. Also going to draw a card here on end step, I believe. Exactly, activating the Tome. Let's see what I can find. I mean, I'm drawing two cards a turn instead of one, so that should give me some advantage. I've got my 4-4 flyer and my often troll with forest walk. Exactly, I'm going to swing in here, hopefully deal some damage. He's going to send back the flyer, take two, so it's going to drop down to 11. Finally able to deal some damage again, that's been uh, quite a few turns ago. But just passing the turn though. Three cards in hand past turn really wonder what those uh, three cards can be. There is a Curd Ape here. So also Falk just keeps playing out more creatures. <laughs> oh man, I think at a certain point, oh, we cannot see that one card he's playing over there. Was that a Soul Ring? I think at a certain point he will have to go for kind of this Alpha Strike scenario, right? I mean, I'm thinking if I would be Falk, I probably would just try to collect Giant Groves and Berserks and at a certain point just go for an Alpha Strike and just kind of see what creature, you know, gets through. Again, drawing an extra card in end step, by the way, with the Tome and drawing a card for turn. Finding more factories. 
Looks like I want to tap a black here. What am I going to do? Tapping two. Demonic Tutor. Okay, I, I think I know what I'm going to tutor up, right? It has to be a Nevenerals Disc. Exactly. Demonic Tutor, Nevenerals Disc. And I mean, this is killing. This is going to be a killer here for Falk. I'm going to deploy the disc. Next turn, I can pop it. I'm a little bit surprised that I'm using my, uh, my factory C. Well, perhaps I'm doing that because I want to keep my red and black mana open for regeneration. And look at that. I'm just going to pass the turn because I'm expecting Falk here to go for like an alpha strike because I have that Nevenerals disc. So I want to keep my creatures on blocking duty here. I'm still on 18, which is good. But look at this. Now he's going to attack. There he comes. Full on attack. I believe he's got one card in hand or two, perhaps. This is huge. So let's see how I'm going to block. Looks like I'm going to put the Rook Egg probably in front of a Kurt Ape. Exactly. Going to put a Sedge in front of another Kurt Ape. Going to animate my factory, block an often troll, and make it a 3 3. And then we have four creatures remaining still. So I could go, yeah, block the three Urnums and regenerate. And then I'm probably going to take two points of damage, it seems. Ooh, he does have a Berserk, though. So that's going to be an eight powered creature. Probably blocking the Wisp, right? Because that would mean seven points of trample damage coming through together with the Ufton Troll. So that would be nine points of damage. So, I mean, he's half my life. Fair enough. It looks like we're still discussing a few things, trying to clarify the blocks here. I'm going to go to 10. Okay, so perhaps he played in the one that got blocked by the often troll. For some for some reason that I that I don't really realize now why you wouldn't play it on the one that got blocked by the willow, but at the end of the day, it's a it's a difference of just one damage though. So I'm on 10. He's managed to deal eight points of damage. Which is quite good, you know. Imagine if you had another Berserk or an extra Giant Grove and some burn. I would have just died. So now I'm going to untap. And one of the things that I can do here is I can just attack. And I don't have to use my Nevenerals Disc, of course. Or I can use it in second main. But probably I'm going to use it during the turn of Falk. Also depending on what's in my hand, of course. If I want to play something out this turn still. But one of the things that I can do is I can attack for a huge amount. So I'm going to animate here my, my factories. I'm going to attack. Look at this. Yeah, I think it's going to die here. I don't even need to activate the disc. There is a bolt, though. So he did have a bolt. So he can take care of one of the factories. But he's still taking 4, 8, 11. 11 points, which is just enough because he's on 11. Wow. So he's quite close to uh, survive this attack. But I mean, as soon as that Nevernerals disc hit the table, it was, it was kind of over, right? That was the moment we were looking for. I guess I was lucky in this match that Falk couldn't find enough Berserks and Giant Gross earlier in the game because, I mean, that Trample Clause, that's really an issue. Anyway, this was game number one. Quite a thriller, I have to say. And now we're going to dive into our sideboards and we're going to catch up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So Falk, of course, on the play after losing the first one. Starting with the Taiga. I'm really missing the Kurt Ape here, Falk. Taiga into Kurt Ape, the classic move. Not seeing it yet. I'm starting with a factory pass into turn. There's another Taiga. Again, no play though. And this is, I think, kind of the problem for Falk in this match. His deck is just going a tad bit too slow. Really needs to find like a Lanower Elf or some other ramp, maybe, you know, add some Felwer Stones. Or play an Ice Storm here in turn three to kind of, you know, get the tempo going. He's really giving me the time to kind of build up. And that's what I want to do, of course, with my Nevernerals Discs. I really want to play that control game here in this matchup. There's an Urnum, though. That's pretty good. Urnum in turn four. And there's a pass. So four five card from Arabian Nights. 
Tapping four as well. What do I have? There's a Rook Egg. Perfect answer here for the Urnum, right? Remember, Rook Egg, an 0-3 creature from Arabian Nights. Uh, when it dies, you get a 4-4 bird, flying bird, at the end of the turn. A lot of people think this is the bird out of the egg, but I believe Lore tells us that it's the mom that's coming, the angry mama bird. So he's attacking. I'm going to block. Does that mean that he's got some kind of answer here for the 4-4? Or, or is he simply thinking, you know what? It's going to die sooner or later anyway. Okay, there's a spider. Next turn, I'm just going to attack with the Urnum again, and it, it can kill the bird. Then, of course, I could double block. A lot of options here. I can also attack here with the 4-4 bird, of course. Playing another mountain, but I have to say I'm kind of liking this play here by uh, by Falk. Just attacking, saying whatever. Ooh, he's gonna block. Is there a giant grove? Oh, there's a giant grove. Really, really good. So a giant, giant spider here. It's now a five-seven. It's huge. It was already huge. Is there something that I can do though? Oh, there's a terror coming in from the sideboard. So before damage is dealt here, I'm gonna terror, of course, the giant spider. Oh, man. This is unfortunate for Falk because this is your classical two-for-one. And like I said, the terror is coming in from the sideboard. Quite useful, of course, against uh, the deck of Falk. A lot of targets in his deck. And we were kind of discussing how it works with damage. It's actually quite simple. Uh, what Falk does is he first declares blockers on the giant spiders. So then blockers have been declared. Then he plays the giant grove. In response of the giant grove, I'm playing the terror. So all this happens before damage is dealt, but blockers are already declared. So that means that the 4-4 bird is blocked. So it doesn't deal any damage anymore. Here we see a soul ring being played by Falk. Could go here with the 4-5. Ooh, there's a fireball. So I think he's going to burn down my bird. It's gonna turn it into a roasted chicken. And then he's gonna attack here with the Urnum. Put a giant grove on there. Okay, so he's putting some pressure on. Ideally for Falk, of course, it would have been if you also could have had a, a Berserk here. But it's looking uh, it's looking a little bit better here for Falk if you compare it to game one. He's really able to put some pressure on my life total. I've dropped to 13. Problem for him, though, is he's only got one card in hand. There we see a tap of three. Okay, there's an often troll. Oi, oi, oi. The often troll, again, being ideal because it can uh, block the uh, the Urnim here. It's gaining forest walk, of course. And now I can start doing what I did in game one as well. Just kind of make this wall of regeneration creatures. Make it really difficult for Luca to just, you know, attack and deal some damage. Also because his creatures don't have any evasion, you know, they don't have flying. Looks like I'm going to tap too. There's a terror, another terror from the sideboard. Going to terrorize the Urnum here. And he's going to tap a green, I believe. Oh no, a red. There's a bolt. So now he can kill the, uh, the often troll. Good timing here from Falk. And then we also see a Chaos Orb. So one of the lines of play he could have done is choose to flip the Chaos Orb on the, uh, on the Often Troll instead. But then again, I mean, the good thing is now he just has a Chaos Orb. And later in the game, perhaps he could use that, use that on Neverneural's Disc, for example. But again, the problem here for Falk is that he's out of cards. I still have five in hand. That's the big problem for him in this match. I wonder if I'm going to animate the factory and attack. It looks like I'm a little bit in the tank here. Tapping four. Playing a Neverneural's Disc. Yeah, so now I'm kind of making it difficult, right, for Falk. Because next turn I can pop the disc. And I can kill the two artifacts here. So one of the things that I'm kind of inviting Falk to do here is to activate his Chaos Orb flip on the, on the disc. And that makes sense for Falk as well. Because that way he saves his... Um, his soul ring exactly so it's kind of a catch-22 here for Falk if he doesn't use his chaos orb on the on the disc and he's gonna lose the disc and the soul ring here he goes and he hits the disc and I mean this is this is fine oh look at that he's actually gonna use my uh, 
gonna target my Badlands. Actually, I like that, Falk. I think that's a good decision. I like that because, I mean, I can pop the disc, who cares? I do have a Swamp, so that's a bit unfortunate, but I do like the idea behind it to kind of cut me off of a color here. Tapping four, okay, there's a book. And I mean, this book, perhaps I top decked it, but this book kind of makes the disc not so useful at the moment because of course I don't want to pop the disc when I've got a book. There's a Lana or else by Falk. Or maybe I played the, maybe I had the book in hand and played the disc first to kind of force Falk to use this Chaos Orb. That's also a line of play, of course. I wonder if, if Falk boarded in the Crumbles in his deck. I'm sure he did. The Crumbles and the Scavenger folks. There's the attack. Am I going to animate? Just taking the damage. Going to drop to 12. Ooh, there's a Giant Grove. And I mean, this is interesting. In a way, I get it because you're putting pressure on me, dropping me to 9. On the other hand, though, you can think, you know what? I'm not going to play the Giant Grove now. I'm just going to wait until he finally blocks and then I'm going to play the Grove. Again, then you don't deal the damage, but you do take care of the creature. Or you could wait until you can find your Berserk Giant Grove combination because I feel like he's already played out three Giant Groves now and you really want to combine that card with your Berserks. I'm just passing the turn, he drawing some extra cards from my Tome. I am on nine, of course, so I have to be a little bit conservative with my life total. The good news for me though is that Falk already played his uh, Fireball. Taking extra damage. Ooh, this is good. Playing an Urnum, so he's kind of putting pressure on me, right? There's a Lightning Bolt. I wonder why I played this Lightning Bolt, to be honest. On the Lanawer. A little bit surprised. Because what I could have done is, you know, keep the... Maybe I've got a Wheel of Fortune in hand? I don't know. What I could have done is keep the Bolt. Because now he's probably going to attack with the uh, with the Urnum. Block on the Ufton, regenerate, play the Bolt, kill the Urnum. No attack here by uh, Falk. Understanding I've got the Ufton troll to block. Attacking now with the 2-2. It has Forest Walk, that's why the counter is on there. Playing a Sedge. Oh man, this is really looking bad here for Falk. Now I'm just expending on the board with more regeneration creatures. Really taking control here. Dealing two points of damage, of course, to Falk, who's drawing his card for turn. He's going to drop to 18. Actually, the first damage I'm dealing to him. There's the attack. Probably just going to block regenerate here. Okay, there's a Berserk. So that means he's going to deal five points of damage. I could pop the disc here. Oh, I'm popping the disc and I'm making a mistake. I think I need to use the mana from the factory, right? Because then if I use the mana from the Mishra's factory instead of the mountain, I could have saved my often troll. Bit, bit of sloppy magic here. But I mean, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I think I'm gonna make it though. Attacking here, he's gonna take six more points. Gonna drop to twelve. Passing the turn, and I really think if I'm looking at game two, here, I think the thing with Berserk and Giant Grove is, you you really want to wait for that perfect moment to play them all out and to have that surprise, you know, and then you can deal so much damage with one blow. There's a Falling Star. Okay, that is really cool. That is really cool. And I think he's playing it out because he knows he's going to lose next turn. It's just a lot of fun to show this Falling Star. Super cool card. And that's it. That is game number two. And that is also the match here. We didn't get around to play a game three, unfortunately. But uh, it was really fun to play against you, Falcon. You've got a good deck, but I think with some with some tweaks and um, and perhaps some differences in your, in your play style, it can be even better and of course you were a bit unlucky as well you know you had slow starts in game one and in game two and that meant that i really had the time to kind of build up 
and do my thing with the discs and the trolls and of course it's really tough for you to uh to get by the the trolls because of the regeneration clause and you don't have any creatures with flying so that you know that kind of makes it difficult i feel maybe adding some script sprites maybe adding an extra pendle haven and uh, and really be a bit more conservative with the uh, giant growths and the berserks i think that can get you a long way actually and um yeah, you know, this was the this was the match for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's uh, it's always nice for me to uh, to play against something uh, some someone new. I want to say something new. No, someone new. Uh, it was really nice to meet you, Falcon. Thank you for becoming a patron. If you want to play a match against me as well, please consider uh, becoming a patron of the show. Check out Patreon.com/TimmyTalks. And uh, who knows, maybe uh, we'll record uh, an episode together as well. So check out TimmyTalks.com slash or sorry Patreon.com slash Timmy Talks for all the information. For now, thank you very much for watching and on your way out, please take a moment to like, share and comment on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And now let's go to the end, end scroll and take a look at the amazing, fantastic, wunderbar channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Here we go. Ik het als fikker te samba kan zien.